Welcome back to the tutorials for the thermal system design class. So in this tutorial, we're going to create a 2D model for a 2D simulation on ANSYS Fluent. We're in Fluent right now. So from last time, we discussed how, how to navigate through the different sketching, the modeling. So this time we're going to work in a, in a specific sample just to get some hands on work. So the example that we're going to be working on is basically we're taking a cylinder inside of this domain. So on Fluent, we work with things that are known as domains. So we have our solid body, which will be the cylinder. But the cylinder is surrounded by some fluid. It can be either air, it can be water, it can be oil. And that's what we call domain. So if we see here on this uh, 3D, 3D sketch, we can see that in this side, we're going to have the inlet of the fluid and we're going to have the outlet of the fluid on this side. So basically we're taking this one inch diameter, one inch diameter cylinder. And as we can see here, we have the different dim dim dimensions. We know that the length of this of the domain is going to be uh, 100 times the the diameter. The height of the of the domain is going to be 20 uh, 20 times the diameter, which is going to be just 20 inches. And we can see here on the the, the front side how the the cylinder length is going to be 10 times the the, the diameter, which is going to be just 10 inches. So this is the example that we're going to be working on. So first of all, one of the things, the first things that we do is that we go to units and we select, in this case, the units that we're going to be working on are going to be inches. Second thing that we do is that we're, we have to choose the plane in which we want to work. There's different ways to actually select the, select the plane. The easiest way to do it and in, in a way, the, the one that is going to help you out more to be organized throughout the, the design process is to select, in this case, we're going to work on the XY plane. Select the plane that you're working on, and we're going to go to New Sketch. Here is this uh, blue like outline of a sketch here on the, on the toolbar. We go to New Sketch, and it's going to give you the option to create a sketch. So we, we're we going to create the cylinder first. So we right click, we're going to just rename this cylinder. Just so we know what we're referring to whenever we have to go back. And one cool feature of this is that, for example, when you're working on multiple planes, sometimes you, if you make them uh, right off the, I don't know, intuition, that you're going to have a hard time uh, navigating through the different designs that you made or the different sketches. So the good thing is that in this case, if I right click to the cylinder, I can go to this option, look at, and it's going to take me right through the actual sketch that I want to make. So we're trying to make this cylinder a uh, one inch cylinder. So we're just going to take the center of the plane as a reference and we're going to pick the circle we're going to go to draw on the sketching tool toolboxes and we're going to pick the circle and notice how my cursor now turned into like uh, a pen or a, a pencil or a pen the, that means that we have selected something to draw but when i draw the cursor for example close to the to the axis it's going to give me this C, meaning that it's center. But if I take it to one of the points, it's going to give me a P. This is going to be very important whenever you're working on more, on more complicated uh, sketches that you have to nav navigate through the points or the different lines of, of the sketches that you're making. But for now, we'll, we're going to take the point at the center and we're going to make a circle. We could have tried to see if our circle was one inch at the since the very beginning, 
but that that would take a lot of uh, of work and sometimes our fingers are not as precise as we want them to be so what we do is instead this circle we're gonna define a dimension for it so if we go to again to the sketching toolboxes we go to dimension and we select a diameter for example we can we can choose a horizontal dimension vertical in this case we're gonna we're gonna have a di diameter and if we choose a diameter and we click on, on a circle it's gonna give us this and if we look here at the bottom left corner we can see the details view so we have the, the the actual dimension of the circle that we just made in this case is 4.4.61 so we can mo we can actually modify this and we can ch change it to 1 inch and that's going to give us the the actual circle that that we want so it's pretty straightforward so after we have our circle in this case we can go back to modeling and we have to click on generate what this is going to do is that it's, it's going to lock on our the sketch the sketch that we just made so we have the cylinder that we need so next up is going to be the the domain so we have the dimensions for the domain right here and we're going to do the same thing we're going to select the same plane that we're working on remember that that in this case we're trying to make a 2d model so we're trying to simulate produce a geometry to simulate a 2d a, a 2d problem so we're not going to be working with extrusions or uh, we're not going to revolve or anything so we're just trying to make it a 2d model so in this case it's very important that we select the same plane uh, the same the same plane where the cylinder is just to keep it uh, as a two-dimensional two two-dimensional model so we select the same plane again and we do the same thing we create a new sketch we we're, we're gonna rename the sketch as domain just in case we're gonna go look at it and we're gonna start sketching so as we can see our domain is a simple rectangle when we look at it from the right side so that's what we're gonna select here on draw we're gonna go to rectangle and then again we can try and be perfect if, since the first time that we draw this this rectangle but there is no need to actually do that as we define our rectangle we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna go to dimension and we're gonna define each of the size and how in the dimensions that we want from the center of the diameter of our cylinder to the edges of the of the domain so in order to do that we have to if we want to define the sides of the of this rectangle we go to general we go to dimensions general and we click on the side that we want as we can see it gives us a vertical line here on details view vertical line of seven seven inches well we know that we want a 20 20 inch on this side There is no need to do it on the other side as well because if we do that we're gonna over constrain our rectangle and obviously if we do it on one side it's gonna it's just gonna automatically do it on the other side as well. So we, we already have the height. Now we click on general again, we take the length. So it tells us that we have a 12 inch right now and we want a hundred inches. And there we have it. We have the we have the domain, but the domain that we're having right now is not centered the same way that we want that we have it here on the sketch. So, but what we know is that, for example, from one of the edges from the from one of the edges to the center of the of the cylinder, 
we just have 50 inches of distance. So what are we going to do? What we're going to do is that we're going to take the center of the circle and we're going to define a horizontal dimension. So as we can see here again on, on details view, we can see that the distance between the center of the, of the cylinder and the edge is from this side is going to be 5 inches. The good thing is because it is uh, symmetrical the way that we're setting up this prompt. Uh, you can either pick this side or you can pick the, the right side. Uh, and we can just define this and it's just going to give us the same result. So if we go back, as we can see our circle is a, is a, little, a little bit more centered. But there's still things that we need to, to work on. So we already have the horizontal horizontal constraint so what else do we know we know that the height of the actual domain is 20 inches so in, and if we want to center our cylinder on it that means that we just have a 10 inch distance from the upper and lower edges of the domain so in this case we're gonna set up now a vertical dimension Again, we're going to select the center of the circle, one of the edges. And we're going to say that this is 10 inches. So now we have our cylinder center to the domain of our, or to the, to the domain. So we go back to modeling, we click on the domain and we generate. So we have our model right now. So next, what we're going to do, so right now our, our sketches are not going to be read on the actual solutions for Mances. Uh, uh, and we have to actually make this some surfaces. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go here on the, on the top left of our screen and we're going to select concept and we're going to select surfaces from sketches. So when you do this, it's going to give you the option to select the base object. So let's select, for example, the cylinder first. And we apply it. And it tells you, it gives you the option of operation. So we can either add a material or add frozen. So depending on the scenario that you are in and the problem that you have is depending on which operation you want. Adding a material is basically, for example, if you're adding more to to some solid uh, so, solid uh, design or model that you're making, and you're trying to add a little bit more, uh, add another another layer or anything like that. Uh, that's how, that's where you will select add material. When you have multiple bodies that you want them to interact together, then we'll at frozen this is the case for us so we're gonna add frozen and as we can see we have this yellow thunder here on the left side of the surface that we just made so we'll have to generate it and now we have our cylinder as you can see as you can see even the color of the cylinder changed, so that this means that it created a surface body from it. So we're gonna do the same thing to the domain. And if we go to bodies, we're gonna see here, right here, that we create a surface body of it. Let's rename it, let's call it cylinder surface. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go to concept. surfaces from sketches and in this in this case we're going to select the domain we do the same thing apply we add frozen and we generate so now we have generated both 
of four surfaces. So what we do from here, basically, we're setting up all this domain, and here this cylinder, this sketch, this blue line, it's actually gonna work as a boundary from that domain. So we don't actually need to have this this surface body around there. We we just need the the, the domain and we need the boundaries in which it's it's gonna it's gonna perform, especially in this in this type of 2D to the simulations. So we also have to define whether our cylinder and our domain are either a fluid or a solid. So in this case, even we can define the cylinder as a fluid. We can define both as a both as a fluid. But as as we were as as we were saying, we don't actually need this uh, this cylinder in the middle. We just need the domain and how how it's interacting with the with the boundary conditions that it's creating. So what are we gonna what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go here in create. Boolean. So, what create boolean tells us it's basically a tool that is going to allow us to remove or add materials in, in certain in certain situations. So, for example, here an operation we're going to say that we're going to subtract, and we have the targeted body and the tool body. So, the targeted body that we that we want to subtract from is the is the domain. And the tool body, the thing that we're going to subtract from it, is going to be the cylinder. Apply. So when we go and we generate this, as you can see, even the surface body from the cylinder, it disappeared here from the options. And it tells us that we just have one part and one body. So if we zoom in, we can see that we have just this boundary condition in order to simulate our 2D model. So the importance of making a 2D model and simulating a 2D model is that it takes, first of, first of all, uh, we as engineers, we try to make problems, take the easiest way to solve problems. And some problems, for, uh, if you've learned from statics and, and other courses, we can just take a 2D to the sketch of it, and that's how we can obtain uh, simple results. In this case, it's not just for us to make it more simple, but it also uh, decreases the computation time that it's gonna need. So in problems that are more complicated, uh, we try to uh, do to these simulations in order to save some computer space and have results a little bit faster. So sometimes simulations can take up to up to hours to, to perform, so sometimes we do these 2D, 2D prompts in order to save, save up time and save up some computer space. So this is gonna be uh, all for now. This is how to do a geometry for a 2D, 2D simulations. In the, in the next tutorial, we're gonna do another, another geometry, but for the 3D tutorial, for the 3D simulations.